You are watching With a Cup of Tea, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings. Now, here's our show. I'm here today with Elisa Lorello, uh, author of many books and a very longtime uh, supporter of This House of Books. Um, Elisa, you have a lot of books. Uh, I'm thinking you have a, a series of, I think your first book was Faking It, and that led to That's a series right. of five books. Um, yeah. You have six standalone novels, yeah. um, that, uh, uh, I mean, one of which was like the number one um, download in Germany, I think. That was Faking It. That was the German translation of Faking It was Very the number one book in Germany. Yeah. Very That's popular. cool. <laughs> yeah. You have a nonfiction book. Uh, it's uh, The Writer's Habit. And uh, you have uh, a memoir, Friends of Mine. Yeah. So I'm wondering maybe today, um, maybe we ought to focus on just one or two. Sure. What 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 would you like to talk about today? Which maybe one or two? Well, you know, it, it's so funny. I, I had mentioned this the other day that um, my memoir has been getting some attention lately. For those who don't know, the memoir is really, I wrote it in 2013 or published it in 2013. So I wrote it around 2012. And it was about, at, at that point, I had been a Duran Duran fan for 30 years. And so originally I, w I had wanted to just focus on the nostalgic part of that and just kind of reliving those golden 80s years. But more, more importantly, it's really made me think about how that particular book, and, and unbeknownst to me at the time, was the catalyst for what came afterwards i mean i i had life change after life change after life change after life change following that book and it almost feels like that book was the gateway to that and like it was like a portal that the moment that published i kind of just stepped through and this whole new life happened um so it's been so i've been thinking about that a lot lately and thinking about writing a follow-up just of what's been going on in, in almost 10 years since that book's been written and just what's been going on in the last 10. So I already have a title. <laughs> so oh for what that's for, I have a title. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. If it, if these things are when the time is right. It, it screams at you. It's time to do this now. So um, I will listen for that guidance. <laughs> there you go. Well, tell me, um, in terms of maybe your whole body of work, mm -hmm. um, who would you say would generally be the audience for your work? That's a great question. And there are some days I would answer, I don't know. I think more women than men would read them. But I also think it's funny, I get this reaction. I think that when a lot of men read my work, they're almost surprised <laughs> that they like it. <laughs> they're not expecting, like, there's no explosions in here. What? Why do I like this? <laughs> well, I'm, I, 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 I'm thinking about reading Faking It myself. And, I, yeah. you know, it's... It's something that could be an easy read if you want it to be. But on the other hand, you bring in some real depth. I mean, you have a strong background in psychology. Yes, um, that, was my, that was my bachelor's degree. Yeah, yeah. And the um, premise of the book is amazing. But uh, so anybody who hasn't read it really should pick it up and, <laughs> and take a look. It's, it, it's really an astonishing connection. <laughs> But that was really the only one that had that kind of um, angle, I guess, for lack of a better word. I, I, and, and here, here's, here's what, here's the compliment I really take to heart. And somebody, somebody recently said this about You, Me, and Mr. Blue Sky, which is the book that Craig and I co-wrote, my husband and Craig, for those who don't know. 
who is also an, a well-established novelist. Um, so so uh, a book club had read You, Me, and Mr. Blue Sky, and one of them said, I, I read it, I think they said something like, I read it in two days, but I could not stop thinking about it. So that's the compliment I like. I, li I like to write things that are accessible, but I also like things that make you think. Um, and, and, and I'm, but I'm also wary about saying that because I don't want to make any genre seem less than. So I don't, I used to go with the, the slogan beach books with a brain and I've backed away from that. It's catchy, but it, I've backed away from it because it implies that beach books don't have a brain. And I think there are plenty of beach books that are, are um, do the same thing that I just described, that you walk away from it thinking about it long after you're finished with it. So I don't, I, I never want to make it sound like I'm, I'm making any genre less than what it is because I'm saying mine have this depth to them that another one may not. Um, so, sure. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you one, uh, one question here. Um, you, you've been a long time supporter of our bookstore. Yes. Our co -op. Why, why are you a member of the co-op? <laughs> well, who who wouldn't want to be uh, have a co-owner of a bookstore? <laughs> oh, sure. um, and 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 I shouldn't even put that in quotes because that's that's what it is the the co-op. I, I I am an owner. Um, so we uh, uh, um, speaking, I think both for Craig and myself, we saw we saw two really important aspects of the co-op bookstore. It was this aspect of being a part of one's community. And we really wanted that. And we, and we wanted this model to succeed for, for this community and, and for, and not just the community of writers, but for a community of readers. And, and hopefully, um, bring new readers into the fold. Uh, so it's not a click, it's not a club. It's, this is something that is an invitation for people to, to come into and be a part of and be welcomed by. And, and I mean, my goodness, if there is ever a time for books <laughs> right now, it's such a time for books and and so um even if if we're not able to physically be in the store right now to know that that is there as a resource i mean one of the first things craig and i did when we came back to montana was ordered books <laughs> you know because partly because a all of our books were packed but also just that was the first thing we wanted to do is how can we come back to our community and and support our community again so the first so one of the very first things we did was let's let's buy some books at the bookstore and so so it's that's what's really important so as, as both an author and a reader to nurture that love but also as a community member to nurture the community so it, that was very important to both of us yeah well thank you so much that was a beautiful yeah. explanation <laughs> well, everybody Lisa Lorella. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. My pleasure. Oh, yeah. This has been a production of This House of Books. If you'd like to be a part of the cooperative, please visit thishouseofbooks.com slash get involved.